talks like that, when the sinner talks like that, when the backslider talks like that, when the church goer talks like that, when the so-called religious, my religious woman talks like that, that's pride. And God condemns pride. The thoughts of pride, the action of pride, the attitude of pride, the look of pride, the expression of pride, condemned by the Almighty God. We're told in Daniel chapter 5, Daniel chapter 5, verse 18. O thou king, the Most High gave Nebuchadnezzar, thy father, a kingdom, and majesty and glory and honor, and for the majesty that he gave him, all people, nations, languages trembled and feared before him, whom he would he slew. He has so great power and so great authority. And they were told, and whom he would he kept alive, and whom he would he set up, whom he would he put down. But when his heart was lifted up, when his heart was lifted up, that tells us then the problem of Nebuchadnezzar was pride. He himself acknowledged that when he said, those that walk in pride, he knew what he had done, he knew his problem, he knew what the calamity came upon him, he knew the peculiar iniquity that God was judging in his life. Those that walk in pride, he is able to abase. In chapter 5 verse 20, but when his heart was lifted up, and his mind hardened in pride. He was deposed from his kingly throne, and he took his glory from him. Now you see the word of God says, All this came upon King Nebuchadnezzar. It was delayed, but it came eventually. The Lord gave him space to repent, but he repented not. At the end of twelve months, when there was no change of heart, when he did not follow the counsel of the man of God, the servant of God, Daniel, the predicted judgment eventually came. God's delay. After warning should not be mistaken or misunderstood for some kind of adjustment or modification of his laws, of his will, of his purpose, of his design. design. To give consent or approval to an evil doer. You know, some people will say, maybe God has given approval. After all, he's not talking about it anymore. God is not bothered. God is not worried about that anymore. Don't mistake the delay of the judgment. To me, that God does not count that thing serious anymore. That's what he thought. God's period of delay, threatening judgment varies and we cannot always hope for a one year delay. Uh -huh. God gave Nebuchadnezzar 12 months before he acted. Who knows, maybe he will give you another 12 months before he acts. That doesn't follow. Lord's wife had no single day of delay. Before judgment fell, look not behind thee. And when she looked back, then she became a pillar of salt. There wasn't even an hour's delay. We're told about Herod. He had no space of repentance. The Bible says immediately the angel of the Lord smote him because he gave not the glory to God. How about Ananas and Sapphira? They didn't have any time, even one day of delay for the judgment to come. Before the final stroke of judgment fell upon them, it just came just like that. Even Haman, Haman in the Old Testament only had a few days of delay before he was ushered into eternity unprepared. God's period of mercy and delayed judgment for Absalom was just for a few years. He was doing it and doing it and doing it and then eventually the judgment came. You remember the story? He killed Amnon and then he ran away into exile. When he got into exile, eventually he was sent into Joab, talked to the king. And they made a kind of a play. And then they sent a woman to David and said, This, this, and that. And David said, Tell me now, is this one not a kind of drama that Joab has said uh, is instigated? Oh, and the woman said, Oh, king, nobody can hide anything from you. This is the only work of Joab. All right, what do you want? I want Absalom to come back and he showed mercy unto Absalom. Absalom came back. You will think 
that you'll be grateful. You'll see that that mercy that David has shown will make him to say, I should have died. I killed my brother. And now I should have been killed. But the king has shown mercy on me and he has called me back home. I will walk gently, I will walk softly, I will walk in the commandments of God. But no. And he thought, there's no judgment. Not everybody will be judged. You cannot chastise everybody for what they do. That's what the Absalom thought. Then if they began to plot and to plan. If better you know the story, he then drove David out of the throne. And he said, Absalom ready. Everything was still working fine. And Absalom did not know that judgment was coming. If better there was a battle, there was a war. And Absalom was riding on a moon, on an animal. Eventually, it was God that brought him to judgment. He was riding like this, his head caught the branches of the tree. And then the mole, the animal, went away. He was hanging between heaven and earth. Not beach to live on earth and not beach to get to heaven. Just hanging in mid-air. Eventually, somebody came to tell Joab, he said, Joab, something has happened. I saw Absalom. Where did you see him? He's hanging there. God's hand of judgment had caught him. Eventually the judgment came. Even though it waited for years, eventually it came. That's why the Lord is saying, if you're going to repent, repent now. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he's near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man is thought. Let him return unto the Lord. Only that repentance at the right time will bring mercy and forgiveness and pardon from the Lord. In his own case, in Absalom's case, he was, was, and was, until he was suddenly destroyed without remedy. Saul had the privilege of years of delayed judgment too. He wasted those years in vanity and pride. He died without any hope of heaven. You remember Judas Iscariot? The Lord Jesus warned him. Was saved for about one year. He was being won over and over. And just before he went back to the Pharisees to say, I want to have my price now. What will he give me? I can betray him to you. The Lord still want him, the son of man, go ahead. As it has been written concerning him, but one to that man by whom he is revealed. But uh, Judas as God will not heed the warning. Look at all these things in scriptures that the Lord is telling us. That the Lord is delaying the judgment does not mean that judgment will not come. It's coming. Making his heart as an adamant stone falling headlong, he fell from the promise of heaven to the perdition of hell. Having given the Cadiza sufficient time to show whether he was disposed to listen to him that speaketh from heaven or not, God suddenly brought heavy, rare judgment upon him. As you look at the judgment that came upon the Cadiza, say, This is strange. We've never heard of anything like this before. Read for your Bible from, from Genesis unto Ezekiel. Before you come to Daniel, you'll never see any judgment like this. It had never happened. This is mysterious. This is strange. This is a terrible thing. And let's look at Job chapter 31 verse 3. Job chapter 31 verse 3. Is not destruction to the wicked, and is strange punishment to the workers of iniquity. Is strange punishment. That's exactly what came upon Nebuchadnezzar. And why did that strange punishment come? Because of his sin of pride, the iniquity of arrogance and of haughtiness. That haughtiness, arrogance, pride brought that strange mysterious punishment upon him. He could have followed heaven's saint counsel. He could have escaped the awful judgment, but he was so addicted to a life of wickedness and pride that he could not break off from it. Some sinners for purpose to repent, but the delay, and they are now the time to pass on until the forbearance of God is exhausted and calamity comes suddenly upon them. And let's look at Isaiah and see God judges pride. He judges pride severely. 
Pride in action, pride in life, pride in words, pride in expression, pride in any way. God judges that. Isaiah chapter 10 verse 8. In Isaiah chapter 10 verse 8, for he says, Are not my princes altogether kings? Is not Kalno as Kakemish? Is not Hamas as Apash? Is not Samaria as Damascus? As my hand has found the kingdoms of idols, whose graven images did excel them of Jerusalem and of Samaria. Shall I not, as I have done unto Samaria and her idols, do so do to Jerusalem and her idols? That's the expression of pride. Here the king was boasting. He said, Go and look at what I've done. And go and look at all the images I've made. Go and look at all the works of my hand. And see that there is no comparison. No, not in Judah. Not in Jerusalem. Not in Israel. You know, when you become so proud of your achievements, your accomplishments, and all your skill, and all your ability, and what you can perform, what you can do, be very careful. That's the way of pride. And that expression of pride is condemned by the Lord. And the Lord is saying, and God, I change not. He judged pride, haughtiness, arrogance. At that time, he's still judging pride, arrogance, and haughtiness today. In verse 12, wherefore, it shall come to pass that when the Lord has performed, has performed his whole work upon Mount Zion and on Jerusalem, I will punish the fruits of the stout heart of the king of Assyria and the glory of his high looks. See what the Lord is saying. He says, I'll punish that high look, that pride. I'll punish it. In verse 13, for he said, by the strength of my hand, I have done it. And by my wisdom, for I am prudent, I have removed the bounds of the people, and have wrought their treasures, and I have, I have put down the inhabitants like a brilliant man. And it says, and my hand has found as a nest the riches of the people, as one gathers eggs that are laid. Have I gathered all the earth, and there was none that moved with the wings, or opened the mouth, or peeped. And then it goes on telling us about the judgment that will come. Therefore, in verse 16, shall the Lord, the Lord of all, send among his fat ones, leanness, and under his glory, they shall kindle the burning like the burning of a fire. God brings judgment on the proud. I pray we'll escape in Jesus' name. Isaiah chapter 14, I'm reading from verse 12. Isaiah 14, verse 12. This is talking about Lucifer. That was the name of Satan before he fell, Lucifer. What made him to fall? Pride. Got him out of heaven. And pride still gets people out of an exalted place today. God has created us. And has made us to have dominion. He has given us some privileges and some skills, some ability. If we become proud of that, and we forget God who has given us what we have. And then we think, look at me. Look at what I have. And look at what I can do. And look at my accomplishment. That word of pride, that attitude of pride, that arrogance will be judged severely by the Almighty God. Isaac chapter 14 verse 12, how art thou falling from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning, how art thou cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations, for thou hast said, is the expression, is the pronunciation, is the proclamation, is the things we say, what surprise, expression surprise, the attitude of pride. The heart that is changed by pride. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation. In the sides of the north, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. That's pride. And then he tells us, yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, 
to the sides of the pit. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is not this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake the kingdoms, that made the world as a wilderness, and destroyed the cities thereof, that opened not the house of his prisoners? The people will say, Is not this so and so that was so great? that was so mighty, that did this and that, and now because of his pride, the Lord has brought him down. And you know what the Bible says? It says, these things are written for our learning, upon whom the ends of the world are come. And the Lord is warning us, he's saying, let's be humble, there shouldn't be a man. What the Lord requires from me, he says, we'll walk humbly with our God. Pride will always be judged by the Almighty God, and it doesn't tolerate pride in his kingdom, in the heart of anyone, whether of a sinner or of anyone in the kingdom. Second Chronicles chapter 26. In Second Chronicles chapter 26, from verse 15, an image in Jerusalem ages invented by cunning, clever, wise men to be on the towers, upon the bulwarks, to shoot arrows and great stones with her, and his name spread far abroad, and it was marvelously held till it became, till it was strong. Here we're learning about a king. It was the Lord that held him. It was the Lord that promoted him. It was the Lord that gave him opportunity and privilege until he became strong. But he forgot that. He forgot that the time you were a baby you knew nothing. That the time you were a baby you couldn't speak a word. That the time you were a baby you couldn't even stand up and walk. That the time you were a baby you didn't have intelligence to, to, to know anything. That the time you were a baby you couldn't, you couldn't possess anything. But now the Lord made him to grow and gave him great opportunity and position. All that got into his head. He became swollen headed. He became like a balloon. And then was inflated because of the position and the possession that he had. It says he was marvelously held until he was strong. Verse 16. But when he was strong, his heart was lifted up to his destruction. When he became strong, when he became prosperous, when he became wise, when he became knowledgeable, when he became skillful, his heart was lifted up to his destruction. For he transgressed against the Lord his God. And he went into the temple of the Lord to burn incense upon the altar of incense. And Azariah the priest went in after him, and with him for first call, that eighty priests of the Lord, that were valiant men. And it was to Uzziah, the king, and said unto him, It appertaineth not unto thee, Uzziah, to burn incense unto the Lord, but unto the priests, the sons of Aaron, that are cons consecrated to burn incense, go out of the sanctuary, for thou hast trespassed, neither shall it be for thine honor from the Lord God. He was a king, and because he was a king, he thought, I am all in all. I can do anything. I can be anywhere. And I can offer the incense. Forget about the commandments of God. Forget about the privilege that is specially given unto the priest. I am king now. See my achievements and see my accomplishments. What can't I do? This is the only thing remaining for me to do, and I'm going to venture into it. I'm going to do it. And then when the priest saw him offering incense, they went to him. They said, What are you doing? It appertaineth not unto thee. You shouldn't be here. You shouldn't be doing this. What was his attitude? Did he say, I'm sorry? Did he say, I was tempted? Did he say, Please pray for me? Did he say, If God will forgive me this once, I will not do this again? No, a proud man doesn't know anything about repentance. A haughty man with a high look, 
with a pompous heart. A person that is contrary to the will of God, the mind of God, doesn't know anything about, I'm sorry, doesn't know anything about repentance. He sins with impunity. Now we're told his reaction in verse 19, then Uzziah was wroth. And he had a censor on incense to burn incense. And while he was wroth, while he was angry with the people of God, with the priests, leprosy, the leprosy even rose up in his forehead before the priests in the house of the Lord from beside the incense altar. And Azariah, the chief priest, and all the priests, city of them, looked upon him, and behold, he was leprous in his forehead. And they thrust him out from theirs. Yea, hence stayed himself hasted also to go out, because the Lord had done what? The Lord had smitten him. The Lord judged him. The darkness was from God. The smiting was from God. The leprosy was given to him by God. And Uzziah the king was a leper until when? Tell me out loud. He could have avoided that. He was a leper until the day of his death because of the pride. And see the price he paid. That's much, much greater than the pleasure of going to offer incense in the house of the Lord. Let's be aware, let's be careful, let's take warning, let's remain humble in the sight of the Lord. And let's be where God wants us to be and do only what 